Is this thing on? All right, gentlemen, coming to main stage next, this is Bunny. Get up there. She's got a tornado of titties coming your way. Get those dollar bills ready. She's got an ass that shakes like Michael J. Fox. So get up there and throw, throw, throw them dollars. Dude, that is fucking iconic. <laughs> What's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. Today, my lady boner is standing at salute right now. Ooh. I've got one of the hottest. Uh, you're a Sarge, right? Yep, Sarge got Marines. One of the hottest Sarges sitting on the Dumb Blonde couch right now. Combat Barbie, hey. aka is it Rihanna or Rihanna? Either or. It's supposed to be Rihanna, but I'm white, so I'm like Rihanna. <laughs> Listen, my name's Alyssa, so I hate it. people are like Allison, Alicia, and I'm like, no, I just got to the point where I don't even correct people anymore. <laughs> What's up, baby? How are you? Hi, I'm Gary. Uh, I can't even talk right now. I'm so nervous. I'm so excited, honestly. Um, I've been trying to do this for what two, two dude and a half since years? 2019. Yeah. We've been trying to get together, but you're a far, you're a, you're hard to tie down, oh, lady. I am sorry. No, it's good. What's been what's been going on so far oh like just, god what where do we it? start <laughs> right well let me let me look into my uh interview i wrote out in 2019 and get some <laughs> notes right here um you were doing traveling back then actually yeah. and you st you just made a recent move right from oh, vegas god, yes. where are you at now north carolina good old fateville i actually Oops, i'm allowed to cuss on you <laughs> yeah of course this is my yes this is my show we encourage cussing Vietnam is where I live now, but yes. what what was what what was about uh, North Carolina that fucking was like I gotta move here. So um, Vegas, God, I, I haven't told anybody. This is the first I've told anybody in the world besides you. You know, um, yeah. I was really bad on drugs and porn and everything in Vegas. You know, it goes hand in hand there. So I needed to get somewhere so far away from any of that. You know, like weed's illegal in North Carolina. So I was like, yeah. I need to go where I can't even get access to it. In Vegas, my drug dealer lived across the street from me. So I was like, I need to get so far away from. The industry, the people, everyone there sucks. I mean, you're from there, you know. Everyone's yeah. up, out for themselves and just shitty fucking people. And so I was like, what's so far away so different? The South. And I was like, okay, why North Carolina? Well, I met a stupid army guy there. <laughs> that didn't work out. That's why he's fucking stupid. But I uh -huh. feel like army relationships are so fleeting. I feel like yeah. the dudes in the army are like hard to deal with. Yeah. But they're Probably. fucking hot. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least you like your own kind, though. We're going to yeah. touch base on Vegas a little bit later, but I wanted to let people get to know you a little bit. Um, I was doing some research on you, and you did what, seven tours or seven years? Seven years in the Marine Corps. Yep. Yeah, tell us about that. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm trying to get emotional. I'm very proud of everything I've done. Um, no, joined please. at 18. Let it all out. Oh, God. <laughs> I said, don't cry till later. <laughs> oh, crying is good. Listen, we this is a safe space here. We encourage all fucking emotions here. All right, well, you're about to get them all. So. <laughs> um, I joined at 18. I wanted to get so far from my hometown. You know, I come from nothing. Um, should I talk about my... Yeah, we could talk about... Uh, let's start, Okay, where'd you grow up? And then okay. we'll get into that. Yeah, because I'm like, that's the whole thing. Yeah, okay, thing let's, let's start from the beginning and then we'll just fucking go from there. Awesome, thanks. So I grew up in a small town. It's Kerman, California, the very middle of California. So all farms. And actually, it's funny. Um, the only thing I'm proud about about that area is that 70% of America's food comes from the Central Valley in California. So it's literally just farms and that's it. So one stoplight town. I graduated with like 90 people. Um... But my whole family like lives and dies on that farm and people are like, oh, you're from a farm and they think, oh, cutesy. But no, we were fucking broke, like dirt broke. Aww. The only thing we made was raisins. And, um, you know, the company's son made. Yeah, they would buy our raisins and send us a check back. But that's only like 40,000 a year. And, you know, 10,000 of that goes into the tractors. Oh, and yeah. Running a farm, yeah. dude, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. We didn't realize that until I started doing these episodes on my Patreon called Working Girl. And oh, I yeah, went, I saw that. I went and worked on a farm and I was like, how do these bitches do this? <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, this city girl is not made out for this. No, it sucks, man. And my whole family, like five generations, half of them are from Sicily, Italy. The other half are straight from Mexico. So like half my family's illegal and half of them are freaking so <laughs> cartel people. Yeah. <laughs> well, she uh, said illegal <laughs> and cartel. Let's uh, save that for later. Now. Yeah, gotcha. But, but seriously, so... Um, Super broke, like had nothing. And then my parents decided, oh, let's just start doing fucking drugs. So they were like on meth, mm -hmm. like my entire childhood. So not only like we were working our ass off in the fields, my grandpa was a hard ass. Um, one row of raisins, we had 40 acres. One row would take 10 hours. And every day after school, I don't give a fuck. You're going to do this row, pick Aww. the entire row before you go to sleep. So we didn't have weekends or summer vacations. It was just work, work, work. work. And then I looked around. I was like, I don't want to be any part of this anymore. And, and we were broke, broke, like 
we had to choose between keeping the water on or electricity on sometimes mm. and so sometimes it was both of them are off and like isn't it crazy when as a child that you can be so in tune and know that hey these the, the everybody around me is people i don't want to be like exactly that's exactly how i was a, as a child and i ended up leaving home at 14 and never went back damn that's young mm -hmm. yeah i wish i could but i tried so many times to get away but i've just come right back because there's no, nowhere yeah, nothing you, it's hard you don't know yeah. what to do yeah so i, I got a I got a boyfriend like at 15 I would spend most of my time in his house just to get away from like the yeah craziness of my parents and like but I remember um we were starving my mom refused to get on welfare because she's conservative Republican doesn't want to live off the government but we're but poor. she'll do math yeah yeah so <laughs> and I'm like dude so she wanted to be on welfare but we were starving so I remember uh going to Vaughn's which is like I'd ride my bike all the way to Vaughn's which is freaking miles down the road which is our like Kroger or whatever yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. And I'm was, from the West Coast, so I know oh, all these stores. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Like, what the hell is Vons? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, remember I actually loved Vons. Actually, Vons <laughs> was like more expensive than like Albertsons and Smiths for us. Yeah, but it was the only thing like closest <laughs> to our house. So I was like, fucking Vons. Yeah. And I don't know if their cameras didn't work or what, but I'd be shoplifting every other day there. I would fill my whole backpack up with like Pop Tarts, Doritos for me and my sisters to eat food. Um, mm. And then I got arrested for that. And then, you know, it's just crazy, like looking back at everything. And we had no clothes at all for school. We'd, I'd wear the same shirt. I'd turn it inside out. Like, and so there was like a, a Macy's down there. And I'd ride my bike to Macy's. And what I would do is I'd go in the dressing room and I would just take a bunch of things to try on and layer them and then put my jacket on and take off running. And that was me and my sister's clothes for school. Like it was, mm. it was fucking bad. So, um, but it all, you know made me you who seem, I am and you seem like you're close to your parents now how's that relationship yeah so they just got sober about three years ago thank oh, god wow, recently. yeah so and you know it's like at first I was so mad my entire Marine Corps career because I I joined to get the fuck out of there and then I held such a grudge but I'm like you know holding a grudge does me no good and forgiveness is oh my god it's yeah it's so it there you can't put a price tag on peace yes exactly that's what i tell everybody because i mean we could all sit here and be pissed off at our parents but honestly our parents weren't raised in a generation where they were taught how to take care of their emotional trauma exactly and, their, and the damage that was done to them exactly. so they inflicted it on us and i feel yeah. like the generational curses stop with us i feel like we're so strong and we yep. have so much knowledge now that we're yeah. like fuck no we're not gonna be like our parents mm -hmm. we're gonna completely change this around so it's crazy you say that though because me and my brother were just talking about that like how everyone we know all of their parents were in that shitty yep era then, yeah yeah and now our generation is the one that's got our shit together because we refuse to to live like that and well like, you can either do one of two things you can be just like them or you can be yeah. not be like them at all and i think yep. the strong ones not saying the ones that that caved in are weak but we just want a different you yep. know so how old were you when you enlisted in the army 18 so the army marine or the corps. marines marine, marine corps yeah that's the thing that's a pet peeve for marines were like We're right not the yeah army. no i want to say the right thing because they'll like, come after me they can, they've come after me online before no for like well let me know shit. and i'll fucking come after them <laughs> yeah that's a, someone what like, made you want to uh get into the marines over like any other like the army the navy and fucking whatever else they have um so yeah i just graduated high school and first off i'm the only one in my fucking family to graduate high school um Yay. and not have kids at 15 everyone has kids thank you so i was like i graduated i'm the first to do that so i'm gonna be the first to join the military so i I had nowhere else to go, nothing to do, but I was like, I want to get the fuck out of here and I want to make a difference. So I rode my bike to the recruiting station. I'm always on my freaking little mountain bike. <laughs> you are in shape, motherfucker. Yeah. I can't even ride a bike around the block right now. And I work out all the time. Yeah. Riding a bike, as a kid, you can ride a bike and it's like nothing. You get on a bike fucking after 25 and you're like, how the fuck did I do this every day, all day? Yeah, I like instantly winded. I tried the other day. I was like, I'm yeah. winded. I can't, I can't even walk to the mailbox. I'm out of breath. But Right. Um... Yeah, and then I walked up to the recruiting station and in my hometown, they're all in a row, the Army, the Navy, Marine Corps, and the Air Force, and they all have glass windows, so you could like look in all of them, and then when you're in there, you can look out. So I walked in, and I was like, I'm going to join the Air Force because, you know, who want, who doesn't want to, you know, it's cool, and Be I'm a girl. Be airplanes and shit. Yeah, so I, I was sitting there in the Air Force recruiter's chair, and he was like having me sign right away. He's like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. You got a high GPA, all this stuff, whatever. Um and then I look past the window and I see out the window, there's a Marine walk by in his dress blues. And I was like, oh shit. And just like frozen there. Not because I thought he was hot or anything, but because of like. His presence. Fuck. Yeah, he's put together. He's, he's, he's got his shit. To, I'm like, there's something about the Marine Corps uniform. I, it gives me chills talking about it. I was like, <laughs> I remember You're that proud. day. Yeah. And so I walked out and I was like, oh fuck. I'm, I'll be right back. And he's like, no, don't go. Cause he knew. <laughs> so I walked out, I chased the Marine. I walk up to him I'm like, hey, how do I become a Marine? And he looked at me, he's like, you want to become a Marine? And he kind of laughed. And I was thinking the same thing he was. I'm like, yeah, I want to become a Marine. Come on. And he's like, I don't think you can. I'm like, 
I want to. And I walked in the, and he's like, okay, follow me. I walked in the office and all the posters and everything on the wall, I was like shaking, scared, and it intimidated me. That's why I wanted to join the Marine Corps because I didn't think I could. Nobody else thought I could, but I wanted to give it a shot. So the rest of my life, I wouldn't say like, what if? Yeah. You know, if I failed, I would just join another branch. But I was like, it scares the fuck out of me. And that's why I want to do it. So yeah, if your yeah. dreams don't scare you, you're not dreaming big enough. Exactly. That whole yeah, exactly. So and then I, um, I didn't care what I did. I had nothing. I knew nothing about the Marine Corps, the ranks and nothing. Um, but I was like, sign me up. And he's like, what do you want? I was like, well, I don't want to be fighting and killing people, but I want to be helping the ones that do. So I want a desk job. And he's like, OK, easy enough. So he made me a supply chief. So uh, bullets, beans, band-aids, boots. That was that was my so thing, your so. first fr- like okay tell me <laughs> when did you take off like how are you feeling I took off a week later than that like a wow week, and so I, they just like were like bitch you're gone and I had nothing I had nothing in my name nothing to lose nothing I was like let's just do it let's yeah. I've only only something to gain so um what did your family say whenever you went oh, home and were like I'm going to the marines my mom cried and my Aww. dad my stepdad laughed at me and um he was Aww. really abusive at the time you know you know meth makes people you know yeah of course um, was he always abusive to you growing always up? since I and he was my stepdad since I was seven yeah and he Aww. was he used physical to get, oh yeah not sexual thank god but every yeah. other yeah, way you can imagine god. like for I mean seven, abuse is abuse you don't minimize yeah. it no, tr- emotional right. abuse is is worse than physical abuse I feel and yes. I've had both so yeah it's really hard to get over that he would just um so I'm half Mexican and he was he's full white so he would Get, you know be like get in the kitchen and do the dishes you spick and like you beaner and, and then he was when I'm doing the dishes he would stand next to me and be like uh, don't you hate that your eyes are brown the whole world has brown eyes you're not special and I want to cry right now he's like don't you hate that your hair is black my real hair color is black it's me probably, too that's I'm, probably I'm Brazilian I'm Brazilian and white nice. trash so yeah I get it yeah and he, but he would whisper that in my ear like don't you hate your your hair's black you're not fucking special did, you're not pretty did your mom know that? she just let him because if she said anything like leave him alone he'd start beating her ass so he would she would just let him and you know what drugs and shit yeah yeah so i was mad at her my whole life for that like how could you let a man do that to your children but um i had an abusive stepmom wow. so i get it yeah i told i, I like- left home because of the abuse wow yeah it's it's different whenever especially yeah. especially can't talk when you're a child you want to be able to love and trust your parents and you yep. want their approval so bad oh, yeah even if they're not if, if they're a parental figure they don't even have to be blood you know yeah so to have a step parent that doesn't even that isn't even related to you tell you these things about yourself yeah. has got to be just so heartbreaking yeah i never got told that's why i love Marilyn rope everyone thinks it's so cliche but she said i was never told i was pretty growing up and every child should be told they're pretty yeah so like i kind of it made me into this I am now I yeah. you know in the approval of the world because of I never got it from it's crazy as, as an adult everything we look for we, all our actions are based off of what we didn't get as a kid as a child yeah yeah I never got that good job or like you're pretty or you're worth something I'm gonna cry right now sorry no it's okay <sighs> it's okay to cry they say that when you cry dude it's just a release yeah. and it's like <laughs> I don't know I fucking wish I could cry more I'm the, I went the opposite <laughs> way I'm like a fucking cold stone cold killer yeah. and fucking when I can cry it's like fucking Niagara Falls dude Aww. and it's like ugly cry like Kim <laughs> Kim K ugly cry <laughs> trying to fuck my makeup up if you weren't so far away and we didn't have these microphones in front of you i would stand up and hug you oh thank you (laughs) i hate that for you i totally uh you know it's when you meet um kindred spirits you can just see their inner child you know and that's why you are the way you are though that's why you're so uh very positive and upbeat and stuff like that because as a child you were tore down so much oh yeah but i think it's beautiful that you've turned that around and you didn't become a victim yeah, that's why I don't. Let's. When I told myself before I walked in here, I'm like, don't talk about the sad. But you know what? It's part of my story. That's and it, made, of, yeah. it made me strong. But I also, my whole life, I'm like, uh, it's made me. I don't know if I have like a, not a god complex because I don't think I'm a narcissist, but like um an You'd alpha a a chip on my shoulder because mm-hmm. I have I had to be strong. So I'm like, I don't want to be weak. I don't want to be the victim. But sometimes you know it gets me into situations where I'm like, it's pushed people away that I've loved. I've been married mm-hmm. three fucking times to military dudes. But we'll, I was we'll get like, into that too. Yeah. <laughs> I've been married three times too. But oh my! <laughs> yeah, nice. I it's because we're that. looking for love yeah. in all the wrong places. You know, it's just yeah. like you said, as a child. Yeah. So let's get back on track to you telling your mom that you're oh, leaving yeah. for the Marines. She cried. My Step dad dad didn't believe in you. No, he said, I'll, "Where's he, your real dad?" Oh, um, we don't know. So I do. Okay. So he's straight from Mexico, Michoacan, okay. Mexico, which is like cartel center. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so he was in and out of my life the whole time. My mom got with him. She told me I wanted to be with the bad boy. Mm. So she's like, I love him. And I asked my dad, he'll call me every now and then I'll ask him like, 
you know, have you talked to mom? And he's like, you know, every now and then I'll always love her, but we can't be together. And my mom tells me the same thing. I'll always love him, but we can't be together. Yeah. So he's still out there doing his thing. But right. uh, yeah, I can't really say much about that. But yep. uh, he loves me. He called me when I got the cover of Playboy and he's like, baby, is it true what your mom said? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, and you weren't even naked. And I wasn't naked on purpose because I just got them required <laughs> stickers on my nipples. Yeah. But props to the girls that are. Or yeah. That do. Um, and he's like, you know what? I'm fucking proud of you. And then my real dad, t- I'm like, okay, okay. If your dad's <laughs> proud that you're in Playboy, okay. That's so. all that we search for. Yes. So oh, you left a week later. Yes. Well, I um, wanted to say, I know I'm bouncing around. I talk a lot. No, you're but good. My stepdad laughed and then he spit a loogie, went <laughs> and spit it right in my face. He always does that. And he said, see you in a week when you fail, bitch. So the whole time I was in boot camp. What is wrong with that guy? That gave me goosebumps. He's just like, a what piece a fucking of shit. He doesn't, he doesn't want women. He wants power. He wants every, you know, and I have two sisters. So it's like us four girls, us three girls, my mom, he just would like to tear down and make himself feel like something. Like, yeah. But yeah. And I was like, okay. And I wiped it off and I just, I never showed reaction. And I learned don't show reaction. I'm a fucker. The minute you do. Oh yeah. He they just own keeps you. Going. React yeah, and, and he, they own you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He would he'd like smile. And so I didn't show him anything. I'm like, all right. Just walked away and grabbed my bag and never looked back. And uh, yeah, didn't go back home for years. I think it was like four or five years. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to go home. So. Okay. So what was that like? What yeah. did you do? You got on a bus? Yeah. Well, um, walk us through. I rode my bike process. again with my backpack <laughs> to the recruiting station. And uh, I walked in there and he's like, you're early. And I'm like, yeah, I need to go. I need to go now. And he's like, all right, I'll drive you to Sacramento, which is like the MEPS. What does it even stand for? military examination process system i don't know but mm-hmm. it's where they get you ready to be shipped off so he drove me to sacramento from my hometown which was like two and a half hours um and a nice cadillac too in his uniform and he's like Aww. and he he was so he was so awesome he told me he's like you can have a cadillac one day you, you can you can be me you can do this like don't let anybody tell you otherwise and i was like okay thank you and he's like you can fucking do it like he just kept giving me pep talks Aww, we get there I'm scared you needed that this. too in that time oh yeah i had nobody it like to tell me you know so Go I was girl like, yeah the marines did that for me and i was like wow okay like you actually so i get there and they make you strip down butt naked and do the craziest tests at meps like what is you, it what do you gotta do they make you do the duck walk naked like why like <laughs> You know what I'm saying on the floor? In front of dudes or just all girls? No, it's all girls in one section and dudes in the other room. But I'm like, what are we doing? Like the weirdest shit. Like, and they make you describe every <laughs> every scar. And like um, in high school, I used to have, well, obviously I was really depressed. So I used to try to, you know, find outlets. I used to burn stuff in, onto me. Like I burned mm. safety pins on my stomach to be like, cool. I don't know. I just did stuff to like to feel something. I don't That's where you're, where all the emo music comes yes, in. Yes, I was a rocker. I was never, I'm always a rocker too. Yeah. I was never into the, the self-infliction because I'm too vain, but mm. I fucking love me some emo yeah, music, dude. That's my shit. Yeah, that's why I always notice your music is the same taste as mine. I know. I'm like, we're so similar. I love yeah. That. Yeah, and then I burned this one on my hand. I tried to burn a peace sign in my hand. So the Marine Corps was like, uh, "What? what's that? And she was like writing it down. I was like, oh, I burned my hand on a carburetor. I don't know. I just said that because you, <laughs> yeah. can't, you can't say that you used to hurt yourself and stuff like that. It's crazy. The is, Marine Corps, the, is the Marines pretty tough the, the, against the like... Strictest, like the strictest, is that a word? Stri- mm-hmm. Most strict? Yeah, the, the most strict, yeah. <laughs> Strictest? I think strictest is a word though, isn't it? <laughs> I've always said that. <laughs> we don't We don't have... We're not the uh, grammar Nazis here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay because i'm like a dumb blonde podcast i'm like you're fine we know (laughs) you're not a dumb blonde and everybody on here knows i'm not a dumb blonde so we're good yay (laughs) okay yeah what was i saying fuck uh that you told them that you burnt this on a carburetor yeah and then they're like okay good oh um you can't have ever said that you broke a bone you can't ever have done one drug or drank alcohol not even once i don't know why like and he's the recruiter was like do people like that really exist i don't know but we gotta you gotta lie to them (laughs) they put put you at a table under a light like interrogation they're like have you ever broke a bone and i was like no have you ever did drugs have you ever smoked weed have you ever drank alcohol i was like no if you ever got arrested no um even though all that was wrong but (laughs) right i was like they can't look back that far in my records and that's what the recruiter was like they can't look back so just tell them no um, and did you like, ever have a drug habit as a child? No, okay. and I just just was, because you saw how your parents. Oh were. yeah, I promised myself. I remember um, hiding in a closet one time. My parents were, like beating each other's asses and breaking everything in the house. They were just high. Mm. I hid my sisters in the closet with me, and I like covered their eyes. And I was like, "Promise me, you guys will never do drugs. Like, promise me." And we would we just cried and hugged each other, and, and they promised me, and I'll never forget that. But then, you know, life gets crazy and trauma happens yeah so but um no never did drugs but always fucking i would 
like chug NyQuil. I would fucking. Um, mm, I love my f- a good NyQuil sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my friend had like Norco. She stole from her mom. Oh, we yeah. like crush them up and snort them and shit. So yeah. It, has drugs, anybody ever but- tried to snort a fucking Loratab? Do you know how much powder <laughs> that is? I've tried it before too. My thing was Xanax and fucking Loratab. So oh, I get it. I tried to snort everything you could think of. Yeah. I used to snort Xanax too, but snort Fuck. snorting a fucking blue Loratab. There's so much powder. Jesus. Like you can't fucking snort it all. Norcos were a little bit smaller, but the blue ones, the hydrocodones were fucking <laughs> brutal <laughs> been through some shit but that was the only like drug i had touched as a kid i guess and then i'd obviously smoke cigarettes any time i could fucking find one but mm. um yeah so i lied to the recruiter about or the meps people about that so if they're listening now well there's nothing they can do about it now yeah that, but i mean i'm sure they know everybody's lying yeah they have to Come know on. that yeah yeah but they just want to see like how how bad you want to be there and what know. year was this um 2011 okay yeah so and then I passed a little test somehow, some way, and then um, they're like, all right, we're putting you on a bus, taking you to Paris Island, or putting you on a bus, taking you to the airport, and then flying you to Paris Island. That was the first time I've ever been on an airplane. Paris Island? Yeah, South Where's Carolina. That? Oh, okay. It's actually a little island. I didn't believe it was true. I was like, there's no way there's a fucking island just for Marines there. It's literally just its own little island there on the border of South Carolina. Yeah. Um, and at the time, now it's like they're integrated. So at the time, everybody lives on the West Coast. All dudes go to... Uh, mcrd san diego for their training and all females no matter where you live have to go to paris island but now it's finally like if you live in the west you go to the so it's yeah. finally integrated now after all these years but yeah so first time on an airplane i was fucking nervous no one in my family's ever been on an airplane i was like well if i die now at least i got out of my hometown <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah i get there fucking just fucking three months as long as boot camp too out of all the um what was boot camp like brutal Fuck. you know how evil bitch i should say bitches women can be right yeah imagine when so is it all women there's no dudes yep, there yeah oh my god is everybody horny banging each other N- no because they give you okay it's that's weird. what i mean that three months without dick i'd be like fuck no, this no it's like it's i mean i'm married now so i'm used to it but <laughs> it's nuts and it's funny because they say too that they put stuff in the food there to make you not horny and make you like they put all the, all kinds of like wow. shit in your food to make you um see that you never poop you're always constipated i think i pooped like once a week i know that's t- t- no mine. that's i i fucking yeah, that's and it, crazy that they make you stop your period birth control inside of your food too like all how kinds, is that legal it's the government they own you you're part of government property once you sign those papers so. wow i never knew that they do that to you guys yes yeah. that well, is all kinds of stuff to make you is everybody going crazy there no of so it? the stuff i don't know what's in it but it makes you very um controllable yeah you're just a zombie kind of like i'm just i don't know what the fuck all they the don't others. tell you what it is no but then too when you first get there you all stand in a line and there's people i would say at least um well it has to be even number so 10 people like two on each side you walk through and you just step forward one step get shots in two arms step forward get shots in two arms step. do they tell you what the shots are no nope. nope. and you're not allowed to ask Mm-mm. oh my god so I, I, my anxiety could never yeah i have panic just, attacks and shit there's no way did it make you feel weird or anything oh yeah one of them was called the peanut butter shot so they say because it was so thick and they shot in your ass that you had to sit on the floor and roll around on your ass so all of us like they make you do it for 30 minutes otherwise it'll make a big old mass on your ass oh who knows like shit. Um, there was a, one that they shot right in your belly button because a lot of marines were going to japan at the time and you know they have sars disease sars disease in, is that like, like covid sars sars i guess it like it's attacks your intestines and just makes you shit yourself till you die it's like oh in the, it's my god asian countries yeah so a lot of marines are going to japan so they're like just in case you go to uh, japan they shoot it right in your belly button into your intestines and i'm like dude what like so if if there's a sars epidemic here i guess i'm good i don't know but. <laughs> oh my god you poor baby yeah, so all right so three months in fucking boot camp what was your first day like uh, so what they do at first to see if you really want to stay there, they try to break you. So you have no sleep and no food for three days. Oh my and, God. And they, that's, you're at this point, you're delirious. You're seeing things. You're like, what do we, and you're just beaten down and they're running back and forth. How do they keep forth. you up? Because they want to see who, who wants to stay or not. So they um, did a statistic. No, like how do they keep you up? Just oh, screaming at just you? Just constantly. And then coming and shaking you. They're allowed to touch you, shake you, scream in your face. Like you're fucking disgusting bitch. Like the craziest, the worst things you could ever like. People, they would look at me because I was the skinniest one there and they're like, and I had blonde streaks still left in my hair and stuff. Um, and they made me dye it black while I was in there. They're like, no, and they threw a box of hair dye, dye your fucking hair. Like, and I'm like, okay. Like, but they would look at me and they're like, 
all of them would gang up me, all three drone searchers are like, you're the tiniest bitch here. You think you're going to fail. We think you're going to fail. Everyone thinks you're going to fail. Your family back home thinks you're going to fail. You're going to fucking fail. And they would tell Aww. you this shit every day in your face, like spitting on you. And I'm like, I would just be like in my head, fuck you. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. So after three days of no sleep and food, um, they had to have everybody, we sit at a table. We all put our heads down at this big table and they say, uh, who wants to leave? Raise your hand. No one will judge you. So everyone so we don't know who's raising their hand and like 70% of the people left. So they did a statistic or a study. It's so like they do let you leave. If after the third day, but then wow. you're other than honorable discharge technically, but you're wow. allowed to walk out and they're like, all right, we're going to tell you this at the beginning and right at the end and see who, and it's crazy. One out of every, I think it's 40,000 people that actually go through that, make it to become a Marine. So that's why it's the few, the proud, you know, the, right. but I, I had nothing to lose. And I was like, I'm not going back to that hellhole that I'm from. So I'm going to push through no, ma- no matter what, like I, no matter what. And I've been through some shit before. Like my stepdad used to fucking pull us out of bed at 3am when he was drunk and start kicking, beating us. And so mm. I'm like, whatever, if I could do that, I could do boot camp. Like, right. At least you're on your own. That's how you yep, felt. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I, I looked up. Well, after we we're done, a bunch of people left the room, and there was only like twenty of us left. We're like, uh, "Is this right?" Like, they would and then merge platoons. They had three platoons at once. Then we made a platoon of sixty, and it's so all the people left over after everyone decided to leave. So there's sixty of us, and at the end there was forty of us. So it's like it's, it's you know, it's crazy. But um, three months of hell. So. So you stayed in there for seven years. Mm-hmm. Does it get easier? Oh, so. <laughs> This is the thing. Once you earn that title, you're not treated, you're not cussed at. They can't cuss at you or spit on you or treat you like shit, tell you what to, I guess treat you like shit, but you're, you're, an, you're an adult, you're a Marine at that point once you get the title. Um, but it's different. Right before we graduated, my journal I'll never forget, they sat us down. And at this point, we're Marines, so they're talking to us like humans. And it's, Aww. we started crying because we're like, they're actually talking to us like we're, we are fucking i want to cry for you guys yeah. god that's they, fucking emotional yeah but they're female marines and she's like uh they would tell us only five percent of the marine corps at the time only five percent of the marine corps is female marines and no matter what you do and this was the day before we graduated no matter what you do so we get our ega like a week before we graduate so we're marines for a week with them but she said no matter what you do you could be the fastest runner you can do the most pull-ups you could be the best at your job you're looked at as one of three things you're either a slut or you're a fucking bitch, or you're a dyke, so pick one, because no matter what you do, the males are going to label you as one, so fucking pick one now. Right. And obviously, I'm not a dyke. Well, I'm, I'm into girls now, but I, I don't look like, you know, <laughs> right. and I'm not a bitch, so right. I was like, they're going to think I'm a slut, because I'm pretty-ish, you know, yeah. at the time, like, and that was my whole entire career. It was, I'd walk in the room, good morning, Sergeant Sugar Tits, and I, and it, it's the guys, so you have to laugh it off, like, huh, hey, fuck you. The minute you act like you're upset, they're like, this is why girls shouldn't be in the Marine Corps. You're fucking crybabies. You're weak. So you have to always my drone surgeons taught me that like no matter what you do never show weakness never because show you have weakness. to work twice as hard to be looked at as twice as less and i was the fastest runner in my battalion i got uh, i did 20 pull-ups that's that's 100 points for males i used to be on my shit um i was the highest shooter in my entire regiment and they would still be like whose dick do you suck to get that award it didn't I matter what that. i did that yeah. was my entire marine corps career so uh, when yeah. did Combat Barbie come oh, God. into play? Right away. So, really? Okay, so that's yeah. so did you dub yourself that or did other people dub you that? I, I took it and ran with it because, um, so I don't want to give this website any fucking recognition because fuck them. They talk so much shit about service members, especially females, but I joined and I, um, it was when I first got to my unit and I got the highest shooter in my entire regiment, the shooting badge, and I was fucking proud. I took a picture next to it and I had, um, we're allowed yeah, to have French tip. you fucking earned that. Thank you. My nails are ratchet right now. But You're I good. took a picture next to it and I had, you know, streaks and French tip and I posted it on my Facebook, but it was public and I didn't know that people were going to take it and fucking slander me all over in it. This website took it and they're like, yeah, let me guess, she banged every dude to get this award. There's no way a female can shoot like this. They spread it all over the internet like wildfire. I, I remember I went from like, and I had an Instagram at the time. I had 300 followers. It went to like 9,000 the next day. And I was like, what's happening? I didn't, I Isn't couldn't. it crazy how the internet just craves yep. chaos? Yeah. Like you could do, so you could really be like, you were the best shooter. Yep. And that gets overlooked because somebody was talking shit. Yep. You know, like people just thrive on fucking other people's drama. Yeah. And I, I was 18 years old at the time. Like I, I didn't, I didn't know how to take it. I've never been like online or like bullied online. I've been bullied in person, but I was like, what the fuck? And I, I'm like, I can't like confront this person. They're online. Um, oh, I know. I Trust me, I deal with it every fucking day. Yeah, I I still do. I'm sure you do too. Oh yeah, there's nothing anyone could say that I haven't heard before. And when it's try marrying a 500 pound dude, (laughs) literally all day long, I get told you're with him for his money. You're a gold digger. Mm -hmm. You're this. You're that. And that's why I started this podcast because I wanted to have a voice to where I could tell people 
my story and yeah. girls like you that could come on where people just go and see your profile and they think, oh, she's a pretty girl. She probably fucked her way to the top. Yeah. No, they they get to hear your backstory. You Thank know, you. And that's exactly that. why I started this. It's empowering. I love that. I remember um, it was actually like a year or two ago. I watched like all your early episodes and mm -hmm. I could sit there for hours and watch them. And I'm like, and on your YouTube and everything. Oh, I'm like, thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so this website took your picture. Oh yeah, posting you went, everywhere. And like, who the fuck? So you started she going is? viral from it. Yep, okay. all over the internet, all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook I, is I, the worst. Yeah, I feel like they're worse than TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> people on Facebook are just—they wake up mad. Fuck at the world. I feel like it's all older, like older generation too on there too, so they don't understand anything. Like, yeah, I don't know, but. for sure. Sorry, my nose is running. It's snowing outside. I did not do cocaine, just for the record. But no, you're I good. keep going like this, and I'm like, <laughs> oh no, my nose is literally dripping over here too. I just haven't wiped it. Like I have post nasal yeah. drip so bad from this fucking weather. Look at me. I didn't yeah. even get dressed today because I'm just like, what's the point of trying to look cute in snow? You look cute uh, though. I appreciate Always. you. So yeah, um, just for the record, I'm not on drugs. I've been sober since North Carolina, but my nose. Oh yeah, is we're gonna get running. there. You just have such a beautiful story that I just want to paint every Aww. thing that you've been through, so that people, when they, you get to the end, people can be like, wow, you Thank know. You. I appreciate that and I bounce around a lot I think I have ADHD I'm not sure yet they haven't done you're fine I do too so yeah. I'm not worried about it and believe it or not it all comes together in podcasts really? like it really does okay, like when you when like you <laughs> listen back you're gonna be like holy shit I really told my whole fucking story um so after you went viral on uh all these platforms did that's when they started calling you combat, combat barbie, barbie? Yeah, like, okay. the fuck she thinks she is. I think the first one was battlefield barbie and I was like you know I should have ran with that and then someone said oh yeah I'd like to have her save me in combat this little bitch well, combat Barbie, and I fucking hated it. Yeah, I hated it, and it went that went viral, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I was eighteen, and I was trying to get respect from the Marines, trying yeah. my working my ass off to be one of the dudes and, and show them that I'm worth something. I remember walking into the chow hall, and uh, everyone's like, "Look, it's combat Barbie!" Ha ha ha! And everyone's pointing, laughing. I got so embarrassed, I broke out in hives, and I was like, "What oh, the fuck?" From so the I stress. Went, I went to the hospital, and then my commander was like. Yeah, we saw this stuff online. Just stay in your barracks room for a few days. Like, let's just let it cool off. And I'm like, what? I need to go to work. They're like, just stay in your room. So I was like, okay. While I was in my room, I deactivated all my social media. I was like, no, they need to respect me. I'm a Marine. I'm not a laughing stock. I'm not a whore. I'm not a slut. I'm not all these things they're calling me. At the time, I only slept with one fucking guy in my high school love. I'm like, I'm not a fucking. They kept calling me walking mattress because I'm pretty. I, don't... Mm. I was like, you know, I only slept with one guy. Fuck these motherfuckers. So I deactivated everything. And then I was laying there on the second day. I think it was like maybe the third day in the morning. I woke up and I was like, no. No, I'm going to be strong and I'm going to accept my story and who yeah. I am and I'm not going to let them hide. I like to, I like to post things. I'm like, I'm not going to let them fucking do this to me. So I was like, I am the combat Barbie. Fuck you guys. So yeah. I reacted all my shit and I changed my name to combat Barbie. I was like, how can you make fun of me if I fucking like it? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then they were pissed. You pissed. take away people's power. Yeah. That's why I named the podcast Dumb Blonde. I because love that. People look at, you, look at us like we're dumb blondes and really it's just tongue in cheek. It's like, no motherfucker, there's <laughs> so much more to me, but yeah, you want to call me that? Cool. I'll own it. Yeah. That makes you feel better. Warm and fuzzy inside. Okay. Yep. So yeah, I fucking owned it, and I just went with that. And they were pissed. It went viral again, and I was like, fuck it, I like it. And that, from then, I was like, I fucking like, I am the kind of Barbie. I am who I am. Fuck you. Yeah. I am girly, and I'm a Marine. Yeah. And I th and you're just a badass. Thank you. Yeah. But so I just, you know, and then a lot of magazines and, and websites and stuff at the time. Um, I was never in a magazine until a few years ago, but a lot of websites were like, check out the Combat Barbie and... You know, it, with every good article comes a lot of hate. And I was oh, just like, yeah. fuck it. I don't care. That's who I am. So. So were you modeling too while you were in the army? Not the army. I'm so sorry. <laughs> while you were in the <laughs> Marines. Okay. No, I was not allowed. I remember one time I first got my boobies done the first time. I saved my deployment money and I took leave. So the Marines wouldn't know because I don't want them to like talk shit about me. Oh, she's getting her boobs done, you know. Right. The guys. So I took my 30 days paid vacation a year, took the 30 days off, spent my deployment money from Afghanistan to get my boobies done. And I had nothing because I'm skinny. I literally had just nipples, like a negative. A cup. No. So I got like well, a rack looks bodacious now, baby. <laughs> Thank you. I'm about to get them done again. I want a bigger <laughs> no, mouse. I but. love them. <laughs> yeah, two boob jobs later. But um yeah, I got like a tiny little A just so I had something there. And I took a picture with a little bikini on the beach and I posted it to my Instagram and the Marines called me to their office, my sergeant major, who the fuck do you think you are? You cannot be posting a picture in a bikini. And I'm like, I am a I feel female. like they're so outdated. Yeah. It's the beliefs. good old boys club. Yeah. And that's what I, I wrote a poem about that. I actually write poetry. Um, the good old boys club. And I'm not, I didn't say the Marine Corps in it directly, but everyone knows like it's like the culture is like the seventies in there. Like I would literally like bend down for something that come up, smack my ass. Like, Good morning, toots. Like, yeah. and everybody will laugh. It's like the culture is like an old. 
it's just like every the world is evolving but but the military stays the yeah, same yeah. i don't understand that why why are they not held to a they, different standard they're all boys like i would t- go to my sergeant major's office i was like hey we were just running right now and I, after my boob job i was like running with the marines i was in the front some marine reached over shook my titty i heard they were fake while we're running i'm like fucking stop well i go tell my sergeant major hey my titty just got grabbed i appreciate it like i'm not grabbing dudes dicks i'm not like what if it was your daughter or your wife he's like I understand. Um, we're just going to sweep this under the rug because it's going to make us look bad. It's going to make the Marine Corps look bad. So I'm just going to move you sections from him for a little bit so you guys can cool off. And I'm like, that's I how I feel it, like that's, it, there's so much swept under the rug in oh the yeah. military. Because they want the, the military to look good to the American public, you know, but it's but like. But we all know the shit that goes on now, yeah. you know, like the, the shit's been blown off the roof many a times and there's a yep. lot of uh, domestic uh, viol- uh, domestic violence and domestic abuse yeah. in there you said you got married three times was that <laughs> while you were on yeah, <laughs> yeah God, okay. you're a woman after my own heart <laughs> so what is dating first of all what is dating like in the military um it's like non-existent because when you meet someone you think they're hot and you want to bang or whatever um you're so desperate to get out of the barracks and the barracks you're in like it's a little gel cell basically it's this tiny it's tinier than half of this room this room's pretty big but it's a t- it's brick walls actually too it's just cold you have like one little cot and it's uncomfortable and you know the water in every barracks room is like brown it's just shitty Ew. and you're just it's just horrible. There's cockroaches. I think there was flying cockroaches, and we called it the crack house, the barracks at Kent Pendleton. Yeah, we live in the crack house. Ceiling's leaking. So when you get married, though, they pay you, like, freaking 2000 if you're, like, a private or a Lance Corporal, but a lot more to be married. And so, and then you get a house and on-base housing and all this stuff. And um, so it's such a rush to get married. So if you see someone you like and they're hot, you're like, let's both get out of here. Let's break free from the barracks. You get married. Oh, gotcha. They call it a contract marriage. It's like you, you're not in love, but you're doing it so you guys can get more money and have a better life. So wow. It's it's pretty sad because you know soldiers don't get paid shit. Like I was getting paid five hundred dollars every two weeks for my first like two years in the Marine Corps. It was it was bad. Wow. Yeah. But How at least did, I was able to have a free little barracks room. But it wasn't. So. When you know. um. So you got so you ended up getting married and getting out of the barracks or yep. whatever. And how how was that? Did it work out? Obviously it didn't. But like, did it work <laughs> out for did it work out for a while or did, was it just like one of those things that happened and then it was over? So my first marriage, I don't regret. The rest, the other two, I'm like, yeah, it was pretty shitty, stupid idea. But the first one, I don't. It was to my high school sweetheart. Aww. So we got married. Um, was he in the Marines also? So he joined and he yeah, but he got hurt. He like hurt his back, so he was like discharged medically so i was like you know what we he's the only guy i ever slept with at the time and i was like I love and he's you. from your hometown mm-hmm. our mamas were friends our bro- my brother's his best friend so yeah. um yeah we we got married and he but then you know he was a stay-at-home husband i guess because he got hurt so mm. um but that was his dream to become a marine and i kind of like went with it too but i know dudes are all about their ego but it started to get to the point where i'd come home with the wards and stuff and he'd be like well how did you get that why did you get that so everything mm. that i was getting told online he was starting to tell me in person yep and he's like i came home with my green belt and marine corps martial arts and i had to get my ass beat like you got to get your ass beat to get a martial arts belt like i'm just getting beat up for weeks bloody i broke my nose like three times like just scabs sores everywhere and i came home and i was like i finally got my green belt like finally and he's like who'd you sleep with to get that it's oh so he started saying that shit to me and i'm like Fuck, yeah man. it's like you have to you have to go out in the world and fight dragons yeah. you don't have to fight them when you get home yep everybody online everybody at work and now my own husband so i was like yeah. fuck and then one day uh, i was like i'm getting promoted to corporal which is a big deal in the marine corps it's nco yeah that so, was my next question like when did you start moving up the ranks yeah well pretty fast because my my scores i not i wouldn't say super fast but but faster than normal i guess because it was my dream to be the first female sergeant major there's still to this day never been a female sergeant major and i was like if we're gonna wow. change this shit show yeah you're gonna do it from the top down like you gotta be in charge because n- nobody gives a fuck you have to be in charge so i was like i'm gonna be the first female sergeant major ever i have chills talking about mm-hmm. it because because you're proud and i wanted that and i still do but um own that s- shit. something happened to me at the end of my tour i don't want to really get into that but uh I mean, you could play this part, but um, what ha- can you tell what happened? Um, it was, I did take, not just take a deep breath. And yeah, take your time. <laughs> Something really bad happened to me. Um, by someone that was in charge of me. Um, I hear about this all the time. Yeah, like I've read so much stuff about this, where it's people in, that are in yeah. higher rankings yep. that are the top dog. So nobody. On- you know yeah um, and there's nothing anybody can do about it because they're so yeah. high up you know but i'd be damned and i try to tell everybody and then i finally wrote what the, happened 
I don't want to. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. I'm not. I don't want to be a victim. And but you know what? Maybe who I am. It's not. It's not about you being a victim. Yeah. It's about telling the story so that people who are going through it know that there there's so much more life. That's what I because I was in a severely abusive relationship. I never drop his name, but I always tell my story because it helps so many other women. You yeah. know, not that I'm for forcing you to talk about it, but whenever you are ready, you should definitely talk about it because it's you're gonna. You. Not only are you gonna heal yourself, you're gonna help heal other women who are going through it too yeah so you guys you went through like a really hard time and something happened something out of my control but you know to this day i'm like i'm not even mad about it because it made me strong and i'll be fucking damned if that ever happens to me again or if i ever let anyone brush it off as if it's nothing so i the command wasn't doing anything so i wrote the fucking comment out of the marine corps the comment out of the marine corps and that's the highest in the marine corps and he was like okay and i you know um showed him all the evidence that i had got and everything and he's like all right uh he flew down from quantico virginia to paris island south carolina and he was like you can stay in and finish your contract you have a year left because every every enlistment's four years so i was supposed to do eight because i did four signed up for another four that's why i got out at seven he's like or you can get out tomorrow and you'll get benefits the rest of your life i said get me the fuck out you cannot Aww. nothing will ever make me i mean you held up seven years is a long fucking time to Thank be in the, uh, to be in the fucking military so it's not like you just fucking quit day two you like yeah. you earned your stripes i wanted to be female sergeant major um it's sad but you know what i it's not my battle to fight. I feel like I don't want to discourage people, but yeah. no, you're it's not. such a because everyone's like, you should have stayed and fought, be the change you wish to see. But I'm like, it's it's so hard when you it won against literally an entire army. It's so hard. It, like you, mm -hmm. there's got to be some change, but it, there needs to be a lot of people to rise up and change the culture and stand together because um, it's it's hard for one person to carry all that weight. The day I got out, the weight was lifted. I'm like, it's not my battle to fight. I always say we're powerful in numbers. Yeah. Because we, we really are. Yeah. So you got out of um, the, <laughs> the military. Wrinkle. Yes. What happens next? Like, oh, how did you feel the first night that you were like home? Did you go back to California? No, I went to my third husband. So I got married a few times. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I've been We've all been there. <laughs> But, dude, I'm like, uh, my mom was like, dude, you have trophies on your wall. You married a dude from every branch, the Marines, the Army, and <laughs> the Air Force. I'm just looking for Navy, so if you hear this out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Navy is sliding the DMs. You're a sailor, and uh, <laughs> I heard navies are that they are fucking dirty boys oh, out God. there. Because they're, you know, they're on boats, so they have to hire all the hookers from oh, when, yeah. when they dock oh, and yeah, shit and like the that. Ports. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Every port they go, they all get yep. diseases and spend all their money yep. and shit. Yeah, that's so. what I've heard. Well, it sounds like a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing scares her. Getting those DMs, boys. <laughs> oh my god. Um, as long as it's curable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, don't give us any lifelong fucking no diseases, shit, please. Please, God, I've been 29 years. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so my Air Force husband, he was actually stationed in North Dakota, which, by the way, I was getting PTSD today because I was like, it reminded me of North Dakota. It's just snow everywhere. Oh, no. Because everything was snowed in, everything was shut down. Oh, I it hate was, it. It's fucking bad. Like, I feel so claustrophobic and trapped in yeah. snow. You know, like you Still can't. crazy. Yeah. And I can't get any delivery last night. Fucking. <laughs> you poor thing. I ate a fucking Reese's Pieces. She and... literally flew in the middle of a snowstorm. Like I tried to hit her the night before and tell her like, hey, they might cancel your. We are still baffled that your fucking plane did not get canceled. Like uh -huh. we're like, how in the fuck did they d fly th her through that? You know, like that's kind of scary. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. They I didn't mean... give a shit. So you went home to your Air Force husband. North Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. That lasted all of seven months. I think God damn that was bad because it's we had, we had a long distance relationship or marriage i should say yeah we'd fly to each other and it was like the honeymoon stage and then we yeah just, you know you never really know someone so you live with them oh yeah and for I sure every so day too yeah. that's like yeah that's really getting to know somebody yeah when so. did you start modeling how oh, did so, that come about so after that marriage blew up in my face i'm like well here we go again i'm like what do i do now because i literally got out of the marine corps I was living off of him. I started going to college there. By the way, um, first family to go to college. I got. A, I just want to say it because I'm proud. I got a uh, scholarship at the University of North Dakota based on my GPA. Yay. So I want to say that because people are like, oh, she's fucking stupid. I'm like, no, I got a scholarship. You're I'm like, no, stupid. motherfucker, I am not a dumb blonde. Yes. So um, I went to school there a little bit. Still broke, though. Had no money, but I was like, at least I'm out of the fucking military. That blew up. And then I'm like, I'm just going to drop out of college. I'll pick back up on it later or whatever, online or something. And I called my mom and I was like, well, mom. 
another divorce and I have no plan. And she's like, come home, baby. It's time to come home. Like after all these years in the Marine Corps, come the fuck home. And I'm like, okay, but I obviously couldn't live with her because she's still with my, you know, abusive stepdad. And right. so I was like, well, who do I live with? And she's like, your brother, you know, he has a nice house. My brother did well for himself. Because yeah, like he go, said, brother, this, go. this generation, mm-hmm. we, ha- we have to get our shit together because we, we don't have parents we can lean mm-hmm. on. or So it's just us. So he's like, sis, I'm coming to get you. I'm Aww. like, what? He flew all the way. That was his first time on an airplane too. Flew to North Dakota, picked me up. And he's like, and I'll beat that motherfucker's ass. If he says a word to me. I'm like, thanks, brother. <laughs> he helped me pack my shit. And we, um, I had two Jeeps at the time, a Jeep Wrangler and a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And then, because um, I... I have a thing. I'm like, I have to keep cars forever because I didn't have shit growing up. I don't know. I'm like that too. I hoard yeah. everything. Yeah, I'm like, I have clothes I from high it? school. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, like I'm so weird about shit like I that. I don't know what, like memories. I'm like, it's a broken down ass fucking, <laughs> but I'm like, I got to keep it. It's my first car. I have yeah. to. Um, so we took the two Jeeps, somehow made it across country in the worst blizzard in like 35 years. Mm. It was Seems it was, to be your thing, <laughs> traveling in snow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, it's weird. Every time I travel somewhere, the wet, it like rains or snows. Yeah. I'm like, am I a bad no, woman? No, no, like, no, not at okay, all. Okay, I'm like, everywhere, I don't know. But, so then I live in my brother's house, but he has four kids. Well, three kids, I should say. Sorry, not four. They're trying to have four. But no. um, he, I call it a little closet because it was so small. It was like a little tiny. His office was a side room. And I remember twin size bed in there and like this much, like a few inches of room to walk around it. And that's it. And I literally lived in my brother's closet. I had $40 in my bank account. I, they were about to repossess my Jeep Wrangler. Mm-hmm. I kept getting notices. I had no fucking money and no plan. And I would sit there and stare at the ceiling and just be like, this is my life. Three divorces later, a failed Marine Corps career because, I, I mean, it wasn't my fault, but... Uh, it wasn't degree. failed though it wasn't failed look how much you got from that you know Thank all the you. lessons all the fucking hardship all the fucking you know you left there with a fucking title you know Thank so you. it definitely wasn't failed Thank you, but that's how, you know, I don't know, when you have that pity party and you're just, mm. that's how I felt, like, fuck, I can't do anything right. Three divorces, got out of the Marine Corps early. That's have life, my baby. Degree. That's life. Like, yeah. you, you're going to have to go, th- you're going to have to go through it to get to it, you know, like, yeah. you were you were put through those lessons so that you could tell people your story and look dude you reach people millions of people every no you're good you reach millions of people every day on your platform dude and you spread so much light and positivity even if you're hurting inside I already know because I'm the same type of person even if you're hurting inside you're still touching people you know and that's what you're here for so don't ever feel like it was failed it's just a chapter in your book baby there's a lot of shitty chapters, but thank you. I it's all good, it. girl. We fucking have all been through some shit. Let me tell yeah. you. I, you know, there's a lady that um I'm, that just reached out to me about publishing my book. I'm going to talk yes. to her about you. Please. Because you have a really good story. Thank you. And I think a lot of people need to hear it. Well, this is the first time I'm telling anybody about my childhood. You know that, right? No, and I didn't know he, that. Yeah, I was like, well, who better to do it with than you? I love Aww, you. I respect you. And I I'm appreciate like, that. I'm going to tell you about my childhood and the shit that went on with me in the Marine Corps. Um, I got interviewed by Inside Edition when I first got out. Well, when I first started modeling, I guess, a little bit after my brother's house, but I'll get into that. But yeah. they asked me the hard question about the Marine Corps, and I broke down crying, and it's on mm-hmm. national television. They cut it, and then they're like, we're not, we're not, we can't. And I was like, thank you, because I'm not ready for the world. I've never told anybody about what happened to yeah. me. I'm not ready to say exact details. Um, yeah, you yeah, can you put two to. together. I mean, yeah. yeah, so. You just have a really cool story and, you know, of triumph, and you're still – living it you know like you're still going through it which we're gonna you know get to the (laughs) present but we had to talk about the past to get to the to the present um my thing is is they let you you guys serve and literally dedicate your lives so much to the military and then they just put you out on your ass yeah they don't give you any resources or you know you don't get like a monthly check or something definitely not and it sucks because right now i'm trying to get to the va because i think i have adhd um i scheduled an appointment in september and they said the closest appointment is in february i'm like this is why vets kill themselves not saying i want to kill myself right 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 but i can't get help at all and i had to jump through hoops like 10 different phone calls just to be told my appointment's not till february i called the va hotline the crisis line the every kind of veterans group i'm like this this is shitty so i'm paying out of pocket now to try to find a therapist or this or that to figure out, like, you know, fix my mood a little bit um, now yeah. that I'm sober off drugs because... Uh, yeah. Listen, sobriety, we'll get to that too, but <laughs> yeah. sobriety, if I can, there's no harder battle in the world than getting sober and getting to know yourself. Oh, yeah. It's fucking brutal. It's dark. I've been battling depression the past two years, so I get... Damn. I've never had fucking depression in my entire life. And not only did I get depression, I got suicidal ideation depression. Fuck. So I trust me, I understand what you're going through. So when wow. you started modeling... 
as soon as you got out or so, sit in my brother's closet and just yeah. wanting, wanting to die like you said it's just i was depressed and then my brother would i wouldn't eat ever and he'd knock on the door and he's like i made you a sandwich sis like he's so sweet and i was like brother what's the point of me being here i feel like a failure i want to die like i just i want give me a reason to stay alive i'm sorry no just you're good give me a reason he, and he would try to remind me of all the shit like i've overcome and everything i've done and um, he went into my old Marine Corps box in the garage and he's like, remember this? And he like brought me my medals. He's like, remember that? Remember that? My brother kept me alive. Like, sorry. No, so that, that's like making me tear up, dude. <laughs> like he uh, kept me alive. Like I wouldn't be here rough. without my brother. And, uh, you know, I was on Instagram. I was already had followers cause of stupid combat Barbie stuff. And he's like, do something with it. And I'm like, but what brother, what do I do? He's like, just reach out to these people. I'm like, I have flaws. I have crooked teeth, a big nose, and I have crazy tattoos. I don't think I could be a model at the time. You know, this was back in. Were what? you? Did you get? Did you have your sleeves? Um, I had this one, and I didn't have this one yet. But I was like, but my t- tattoos are shitty, and you, you know, you see at the time on Instagram, there's only like a few OGs that were mo- like modeling. Mm. Um, I think you were one of them, you know. But there's only a few girls. I'm definitely that, like, an OG. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only a few. Esther Hanika, <laughs> like all them, yeah. Yeah, was, and I'm yep. like. There's only a few. And I was like, I don't have what it takes to be like them. Like, yes, I, you do. I just, but he's like, just do it. Reach, c- click on their pages and see who they're shooting with and message the photographers. My brother told me that. And I was Aww. like, okay. He's like, you can do it. You can, Rihanna. And I'm like, side so Brother, message. we love you. Yeah. My brother's <laughs> name is Eric, by the way. Eric, I, we love you. If I ever have a boy, I'm naming him Eric. So I love my brother. Aww. So, yeah. Um, see, older, younger? He's two years older than me. So it was him and then me and then my two younger sisters who I took care of. Um, When's his birthday? um may 7th so he's a Taurus. oh yeah yay. he's a bull so is chachi so is Aww. my baby over here yeah they see he's not stubborn he's the sweetest man i've ever met so no, I'm no, like maybe no. he's some, what is, i don't know what his mood yeah. sign is but yeah yeah um yeah so he's like do it and so i reached out to them and then i remember i'll never forget robert alvarado he does like old pinup photography mm-hmm. he said he was the first one to say yes a lot of people were saying no at first i was so discouraged they're like oh i'm busy i don't have time or you don't have the look i want Some it was a weird that. world back then yeah it really was yeah for modeling now it's like everybody can fucking do it but yeah. back then trying to break into it photographers uh, were fucking creepy actually we should start yeah. a me too movement on fucking instagram oh photographers do i have a list i have a list of me my friend my girlfriend's made a list of like weird fucking ones or weird, just yeah. assholes or fucking yeah. scam artists like yeah just, no there's so many of them yeah. we have luckily been blessed to work with some of the coolest people and i'll Good. recommend them too i'm sure you've probably worked with them too but i don't know but i love your i love all your photo shoots and everything that Thank yeah you. so i'm like i need to hit up i see but kind of stopped doing that recently too but i think we've all went through it fucking 2020 really threw us for a yeah. loop and everybody's just you know we have fucking only fans now and it's just yeah, like, so then it's like, what's the point? They li- they like and they inst- selfies better. Like it feels exactly. more personal to them. Mm-hmm, exactly. I so. tell everybody that. And Instagram is literally falling apart. The <laughs> algorithms on there are fucking garbage. Yeah, I'm shadow banned right now, by the way. Me so. too. I don't know. I'm a little, literally a walking community guideline. I could fucking <laughs> post a fucking, a picture of me fully clothed and it'll get taken down because Jesus. I fucking, like, it's just crazy. I can't, on all platforms, they always come for me. Jesus. Doesn't fucking matter. All right. So you started modeling. When did you start get getting published in magazines and stuff like that um it took about two years but mm-hmm. like i said robert Alvarado, um he invited me and i was like he's like you know i do military type and you're you're a veteran and i'm like that's perfect so i freaking went up there and with a little corset thing a little saluting a little like he had all the outfit all the outfits i think i remember the photo shoot yeah it was my mm-hmm. first ever like real photo shoot in my yeah. life and he gave me 50 bucks because i remember my brother loaned me money so I, we're in fresno we're two hours away from la and oh he was i hate LA. fresno yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a fucking shithole. That's the worst. I got named the dirtiest city in America. Dude, it's like the butthole of California. If you ever want to live in the butthole of California, go to Bakersfield or go to Fresno. Yes. <laughs> On the streets of Bakersfield. Yeah. I love like, that but, song. <laughs> I don't even know that song, but I know Bakersfield. We should play it right now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Jason, insert. You don't know me, but you don't like me. <laughs> From the streets of Bikers, <laughs> oh Lord! I fucking I need That's to Google awesome. that, dude. Jason, please find that, please. We'll definitely insert it. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, um, my brother loaned me gas. So you did your photo shoot with what's his face to yeah. to do the ar- the not the army. God, the fucking the military pictures yeah. or whatever. And he says he usually uh, girls usually Pin pay up. him. But he's like, uh, I was like, honestly, I don't have any money right now. I could pay you in a week maybe. And then he's like, how about I give you money? And I'm like, what? You're paying me? So he gave me money to get a hotel that night. Otherwise, I would sleep in my Jeep. Um, And I was totally fine with sleeping in my Jeep that night. But I was like, okay. And so he got me a hotel, gave me some money. And then he's like, I'll edit these for for free for you. And I'll give them to you tomorrow. And I was like, wow, that's quick. Okay. I posted them. And then um, foxnews.com and like 
Sports Illustrated, or not Sports Illustrated, that's the one I, that they don't fuck with me because my tattoos, but Maxim and Foxy. Can like, we talk about that, though, as yeah. soon as you're done talking about that? I feel, uh, go ahead, and uh, so they, they don't fuck with you because your tattoos, but Maxim and everybody else. Yeah, they're just like, check out this hot Marine Combat Barbie, like, you know, and then yeah. I went viral, and then I got more followers. I was like, whoa, and then I applied for a verification badge, and I got it. I was like, yay. Whoa, what the Lucky fuck? you. I had to yeah. fucking wait 10 years and have Jesus. a fucking management company get it for me. My husband's Jesus. management company had to get it for me. Fuck. Like, yeah. they don't, they don't, Instagram hates fucking ig thoughts yeah. like they and do not like maybe us. that's why because i never got a violate and i wasn't really at the time right I was just blossoming into an ig thought and yeah. i wanted to be one but um, <laughs> yeah i was just blossoming and then i was like what the fuck that was quick and so once i got my badge though this is a shallow and shitty part then photographers are like i want to shoot you now mm. so i'm like wow you didn't want me before but now you want me but fuck it i'll shoot with you and then that's yeah. when magazines started hey let's publish you i'm like okay cool like what magazines have you been in playboy and yeah. maxim so the playboy let you shoot with your tattoos yeah and so it's crazy because hugh hefner hated girls with tattoos he, i know but he died and he sold it to some company what the heck is it called stillicom or something i don't mm. know the, the hefner brothers manage it but it's not the real Playboy. It's not Playboy USA. Nobody can get in Playboy USA. You have to be... Their thing is about like... Um, what is it? They're super like liberal, progressive. Their thing is like they have bald ladies on there or like... Which is fine. Or they had a dude on the last cover. So they want like transgender... Right. You'll, you'll, you'll never see a hot blonde on the cover of Playboy USA ever again. Like that's not a thing. Like wow. it's... Yeah. So, they but just the, totally uh, took the whole... The yeah. Whole fucking... They like... They, they had like... Um, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know. It's the craziest things, but uh, it's fine. I mean, everyone yeah. wants to feel included, but yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so the, uh, I like that. Everyone wants to feel included. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I mean, but I am. Touched. But it's like, let's keep it. Let's keep it G. You know, yeah. like Playboy was built off busty boobies blondes. And blonde. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blonde boobies. Like, yeah. But, That's what know. we all aspired to be yeah. growing. That's why exactly. we are blonde with big tits is because yep. we all wanted to be in Playboy. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Seriously. But Playboy, though, I will say, I don't know if I should cut this part out or not, but it's okay. It's it's play to play. Blah. Play to what? Pay to play. Pay to play. Okay, no, I was cut. actually going to say that, that we met a photographer in LA who was like, yeah, we, we can talk. He's like, I can't get you in Playboy because of your tattoos. I'm like, whatever. I don't care. He's like, but if you want to be in any other magazines, you can pay. And I was just like, I don't want to be in magazines if I have to pay yeah. for them. And who the fuck buys magazines anyways nowadays? Exactly. You know, like everything's online. So that that dreams. I, I've always wanted to do Playboy just to say I did it because I yep. did. I worked for them. I did their, a TV show for them, but oh, they shit. would never, yeah, they would never let me in the magazine. They always told me I was too overweight. What so the fuck? it's been, they, t- they told me I need to lose 15 pounds. That um, Bill White, I think was his name. The guy, the photographer who shot me, um, he was, and, and if I showed you these pictures, I was fucking literally 120 pounds. What? told me but but i've always had hips you know and I've, i have a brazilian body yeah so he was just like you need to lose 15 pounds so it's always been my thing to be like you know what it's always been a fuck you like okay cool well whenever you guys want me to be in your magazine to cover my podcast i'm gonna do it <laughs> but it's gonna be a fuck you yes. you know like because you guys told me i had to lose weight um and the crazy thing is you have the body that everybody wants now so it kind of backfired on them like yeah it's weird but playboy's always been fucking weird man yeah. they've always been like real stereotypical and yep. you know like i don't know borderline pedophile-ish <laughs> okay <laughs> like you're kind of weird but so after you started doing these magazines where's your mental health at now and like how are you feeling and are you feeling better about yourself is life getting better so i mean you know started making money for the first time in my life in the marine corps i was barely breaking three thousand a month and like living on my credit cards so when i got out and i and i was fucking broke broke i finally I started OnlyFans right mm-hmm. right when I started modeling. You know, I, I don't even say I was a model. But I mean, I guess I, I don't call myself a model either. Yeah, I call myself like, a thought. Yeah, because <laughs> like, like, I'm not on a I runway hate, or fucking. I hate photo shoots. You can ask my team. Yeah. I shoot probably faster than any bitch you've ever met in your life. <laughs> like, I hate being in front of the camera. Yeah, but I exhausting. do it because like, it's our brand, you yeah. know? So I, I started making money, but I, I never did anything nude at the time. And even the f- photo shoots because I was so, I guess traumatized or brainwashed from the Marine Corps about being respectful. So I never did anything nude. So my only fans for the first two years. So sorry guys, like for the, whoever subscribed for the first two years, <laughs> um, it was all implied. So like hair covering my nipples or my hands or chocolate or whatever. And they were pissed off, but I'd make about, I'd make good money doing that, yeah. I guess like, you know, starting out. Um, and so I started making money and then I finally got my own apartment, moved out of my brother's house. And as like Yay. a thank you, I 
did his whole backyard because it was all like rocks and dirt. I like bought him all new grass and the whole backyard shit. So I was like, Aww. thanks, brother. I appreciate you. And um, fast forward a few years later, I paid off his house for him because he's the reason Aww. I'm alive. Like, so I, but at the time, I was I was making. What can, should I say or is that tacky? No, you can. I say it all the time. I throw it in people's faces. <laughs> Shit, when you come from nothing, you're happy yeah. that you fucking made it to where you have. Yeah, I was making like 15 to 20 k a month, and that was a lot for me. I know it's not yeah. a lot now. I mean, I make more now because I do porn now. But yeah. anyways, I actually do. We porn. all do porn now, baby. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I know the world is crazy now, but yeah, yeah. I was like, this is some good fucking money, and I was like helping my family out any way I could. My mom did meth her whole life, so she had rotten teeth. Mm. So she said, baby, all I want is, is to be able to smile. So I got her all veneers. I paid like $60,000 to get oh. her. And I, before my my own teeth, I'm like, I kind of got my teeth done. But I wanted yeah. to do that for my family. I was like, a, I forgive you, mom. Yeah. Because she's like, I, I'll, I'll get clean if you get me new teeth. And she got clean. So Yay. and I, my sisters check on her to make sure. They like check her drawers, make sure they don't have any fucking teeth. Yeah. So um, she did that and, you know, I helped her out. But uh, yeah, started making new money and then um, started doing modeling, you know, living in fucking ghetto Fresno, though. But driving to L.A. every other weekend, flying out. Um. And then I got an offer to go to the Sausage Castle. <laughs> that's okay. So that's where I found out. I started seeing who yep. you were because my husband's friends with Mike. Yep, yep. Um, and I, you know, I've met Mike a few times. Shout out Mike Busey. Yes. Um, he's awesome. Yeah. And I remember you. So what was up with you guys? Were you dating? I was or? madly in love with that motherfucker. He's a fucking Sagittarius man. They are yes, assholes. Yes. And that's the, the strongest match for Leo. I'm my like, husband's a Sagittarius. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he I'm is. just like, oh. Cause he has so much about him and I had my own shit. I had my own money. And that's when he, when I first started hanging out there, he invited me to hang out there and he's like, shoot some guns. we got flamethrowers. You could ride a tank. That's really combat Barbie for your brand. I'm like, really? That, thank you. And didn't ask a dime from me. And I never asked a dime from him. And he would, he's always told me like, I respect veterans. He does. He respects veterans yeah. in the military. He came from nothing as well. So he connected yeah. on that level. And, um, yeah, and then he was like, you never asked me for anything. Most of these hoes have nothing going on for them. You got your own shit. You're a badass bitch. She would give me positive. Every day I was like, I feel like somebody around you. Like, you, you make me feel like I'm worth something, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I fell so in love with him, God. But I was so new to that lifestyle and all these, you know, yeah, strippers. Yeah, it's hard. And like, it's hard being yeah. with a dude who his whole brand is based on women. Sex and, yeah. yeah. And so, but I was like, it's okay, do your thing. I know you got to film and do crazy stuff. Um, but the girls there in the house, like his, I'm not going to name names, but they were like start, they were mad because like he liked me the most and they all wanted to be the top girl. That, right. Because they wanted his money. Those bitches had nothing. And right. Like, I know. I already know. That's why I stay away from, I love Mike's yeah. brand. I love what he's built, but the the energy there is not it. It's fucking yeah. trifling. I don't know. It's 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 rough, and the, they're just bullying me around, like hide my shit, like my makeup or my curl and iron, or just do shit like that to me, or like sit on his lap right in front of me and kiss his cheek and then look at me, and I'm like, okay, I'm not a jealous person, but I'm yeah. like, you're doing this to try to get. It, it, it's got too much and I went on tour with him I think that was we actually went to Nashville that was the last mm -hmm. time I was in Nashville so I was like oh this is bittersweet um I finally said enough is enough that night I couldn't take it anymore um was he good to you though or he what? was so okay. good to me yeah. like and I loved him for a while after we broke up but I just told him I couldn't deal with the life and the girls and the brand and I'm sure he's used to that yeah you know Mike is so easy I've seen no offense but I've seen so many girls come and go since I've been yeah. with Jay with him and I I'm just waiting for Mike to want to settle down he's gonna because yeah. my husband was the same way when I got with him really? it, just a revolving door of women that's how Sagittarius men are I think it's really ego driven yeah because of how they are they're so successful that it's just like a revolving door yeah. you know of women for them um but i'm waiting to see when mike actually wants to settle down well i think he he kind of has so we've kept in contact over the years i think you know it's been what a year maybe two years now or is it has it been a year i think it's been longer two years mm -hmm. but we kept in contact we would like text all the time facetime all the time mm -hmm. and i just brought back all the memories and we just like talk human to human and whenever i had a crisis i'm like this guy in vegas just screwed me over this guy he's like calm down this is what you do i always ran from advice and then he got with this new girl that he's with now i don't know her name but she's mm -hmm. very beautiful um so if you're listening to this mike <laughs> i hope you guys are happy i really do i mean Aww. that um so he's been with her for a while now i think this is the longest girlfriend i've seen him have so mm -hmm. maybe he's gonna settle down with her i don't yeah i don't know but um i always have a spot in my heart for him he's awesome but i just Aww. at the time i could not deal with that life yeah so, so what brought yeah. you to vegas how did you end oh, up in God. vegas fucking got scammed <laughs> no <laughs> yeah Aww. so i was in california it's that big leo heart yeah i that's my fucking resolution. Resolution? Yeah, that's how you say it. Sorry, yeah. Dumb blonde. New Year's resolution. <laughs> New Year's resolution is um just to be more, not bitter, but like skeptical or like just not to be, to not be so trusting so fast to people because that's where all my problems, you know, because I, I, I believe people when they tell me things and I want to, 
I see the best in people, even when they show me red flags. I'm like, I give them a bit of a doubt because I'm like, I'm like, okay, he's been through this, he's been through that, so that's why he acts like that. But I just, you know, I need to um, just be more guarded. I guess that's my was it for. Are we allowed to say his name or no? Oh, oh no, we can. Um, uh, wait, we have to make it rhyme. Was it for Schmander? <laughs> Schmander. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I met him there. But so this fucking photographer dude. Ooh, I'm oh, I want to say his God. name right now. Oh, I'm, you should because well, I, these photographers need to stop fucking scamming bitches. I sued him, and then I was told never to talk about him. Oh, again. gotcha. Okay. So. He invited me to Vegas for a reality show. He said we're going to have oh, a house. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck him. Oh, can we even say that? I don't think I'm I, We could bleep that. Jason, bleep that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, fucking scam. He said that he has producers from VH1 or MTV or both or something coming to film us, but it was COVID so that... So he, he hit me up too, and yeah. I was just like, mm-mm. So he had all these girls fly out from like L.A., um... Texas, New York, Florida. So we all flew out, five blondes in the house. And he's like, I want to know, like, I want to film a day-to-day life of an OnlyFans girl. So, and you all have your own themes. Like, one of the girls is, like, gangster. You're a rock and roll and military. One of the girls is, like, a stripper, blah, blah. So you all have your own thing. And I'm like, that'd be cool. That sounds fun. And we all met before we moved in the house, all of us girls. And we all got along. So we're like, we're not going to fight on camera. I'm like, I'm not going to be crazy like that on camera. Like, I'm not about that anyway. Like, unless I'm like pushed to my limit, I'm not going to. Yeah. So we like, whittle unless you can control the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and so we moved in and then he'd like, oh, we're like, when is filming going to start? And he's like, oh, um, next week. It's because COVID. It was a height of COVID. Next week or this week or whatever. And then he's like, but I'll film on my phone in the meantime. Like, so he's filming on his phone, but then he was like catching us in the shower and like Ew. weird. And at the time I never did anything nude, only did implied. So I was like, what the fuck getting us in weird situations, horrible angles, like c- telling me one thing about a girl. And then, so I would go up to her and then she'd tell her other things to make us fight on purpose for his phone. Um, just crazy shit. And then he'd be like, okay, rent's due. We lived in this like basic ass house, supposed to be a mansion, right? Mm-hmm. Lived in a basic ass house in Vegas. And I, I didn't find out till later. Vegas houses are super cheap to rent oh, or to buy. Oh, so cheap. And he was like, the rent's 10000 so I need this much from all of you. And then he'd be like, oh, actually, it's fifteen now. And then and then we need money for this. We were giving this guy all of our like OnlyFans money. And he had the password to our OnlyFans as well. No. We're like, what the fuck is it? And I couldn't even log on. He would change our password. I'm like, I can't even log on and see what you're doing. And he's like, don't worry. I'm, I'm messaging all your fans. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm like, but are you making me any more? That's what I want to know. Are you making me any more money? Because what's the point of you managing it? Right. If I'm staying the same and you're just taking all of it. Right. Like, and then he's like, oh, I deposit. He put his bank account for all of our OnlyFans. Depo- <gasps> and then he's like, I'll take my cut and then send you your money back. I'm like, no, 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 no. We should get our money first and then we'll send you the cut. Yeah. I was like, I only lasted seven days in that house. I was the first to leave. I stood yeah. up to him, cussed him in front of everybody. And then all the girls too the night before said, we're with you. The minute you stand up, we're falling you right out that door. I stood up, cussed his ass out. I was like, you're a fucking scam artist, piece of shit. He, he, would, he was former army. He would talk down to us like we're, I was getting PTSD. I'm like, you're not going to talk to me like that. Yeah, like we I were, fucking did that for seven years, bro. Yeah, we were at dinner one time and he was like, you know, um, Instagram, only fangirls, they're like less than dirt and they think they're hot shit, but their their worth is less than dirt. And all of us are sitting here like, but he's living off of you guys. And we're like, what the fuck do you think of us? Then? Like you're talking about it. Like, how dare you constantly? So after seven days, I was like, I'm fucking out of here and I'm suing your ass. Like, fuck this. Fuck you. You're not going to talk to me this. You're not going to take my money. Good. But the, I looked around at the girls. They're all just sitting there still. They didn't follow me out like they said they would. I was like, OK, so I was a bad guy. So I left. They blocked me on everything. I went and talked to my lawyers about everything. I'm like, and all the girls were mad at me. Like, you you ruined this. And I'm like, no. And then after a few weeks, I think it lasted two more weeks after that. Then they finally all left and they reached out to me. You're so right about him. It just took me a while to get the courage. To- it makes you not want to be friends with people yeah. like that, though. If they don't yeah. have your back from the get, like, bitch, don't come crying to me now. Yeah. So I keep it casual. I'm like, okay. like, But I'm like, you could have walked out when I walked out. You would have saved your ass a lot. One girl gave him $20,000. You could have saved your ass, but whatever be stupid i guess but those girls didn't really i feel like he was brainwashing them like mil- like the military like they, yeah. had, they hadn't been through it before so they were like you yeah. know i'm talked down to but he's supposed to be helping us and but anyways that's why we moved to vegas so that only lasted seven days so then i was like what do i do now <laughs> so. i love how you're always go- goal oriented because i'm the same way i'm yeah. always like okay well what am i gonna do now <laughs> yeah like now i can't go back i just left california and i'm like i can't crash and burn and run back just yet like i gotta figure it out so um, I knew a friend there. She was an Air Force vet. I stayed on her couch for a while, and then I got my own place, rented it, and then um, I was invited to a party online. 
Um, but I think it was like Danny Banks or somebody, and mm-hmm. she's fucking awesome. I um, love Danny. Her work ethic is impeccable. And she's a cool ass bitch. Have you ever talked to her in person? I have. T- I've talked to her. I've never met her in person. She's fucking cool. I'm like, yeah. you're real and genuine and cool as fuck. Like, she I might love be that. A party. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's where I. It's hard, in. especially girls in this industry. Not not a lot of them are really cool. Oh yeah, you know? no. I don't think any of them are. <laughs> like maybe one in four. Viking like, Barbie is. She's amazing. Yeah. She's one of my really good friends. So I like her. I actually look at her stuff. I'm like, I can relate to her a lot. And then I see that you guys, you say you guys are twin flames. And I'm like, I can relate to you a lot and yeah. her a lot. I'm like, hmm, maybe I can be no, friends with them. No, Barbie's like, an amazing she cool. woman. She's just as real as it gets. She's just like Danny and her work ethic is amazing. Yeah. We love Barbie. Shout out Viking Barbie. We yeah, love if you listen to this. Bailey. <laughs> um, I have a crush on her. I actually told her that like, last week. <laughs> I was like, I have a crush on you. She's like, LOL. Oh, I was like, I either laugh or get turned on by your story. Listen, She's- be careful. She will fuck you. <laughs> Okay, no, she really will. Barbie loves women. Okay, so be maybe, careful sliding those DMs. Maybe I want that. <laughs> I'm gonna put in a good word for you. No, I'm serious. Oh, yeah. If you're down, <laughs> yeah, I, I listen. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you met Schmander at this party? Yeah. Because I remember seeing you guys online, and I thought you guys were super cute together. It was like love at first sight. But that like- whole crew to me just seems like a bunch of f boys. <sighs> See, that's the thing I don't want to get you, sued, but... No, you, well, we're just not going to use any names. I came into Vegas and thinking, because good old me, thinking uh, these people are actually my friends, and like, yeah, we do what we do for money, but we could have like genuine friendships, so... But I got that wrong with her and all the other people there, because... Uh, fuck like for instance i was recovering from surgery i got my butt done and she said she would be there to pick me up and take care of me and she never showed up and the nurses i had to pay them like a hundred dollars an hour to, an hour extra to stay i was there for i was like i have nobody in vegas to take care of me or help me and so i had to call my grandma out. she had to get a, a quick flight out there and i never heard from her for a week and then the next week hey girl what's up i'm like you left me there i was you said you'd be there for me i was there for your surgery shit like that like i, I learned Aww. she's not my friend but I, but not, every, not everybody not everybody that makes it has a soul mm-hmm. or a heart yeah you know? When you have a good heart and you actually help people along the way in your journey, that's when God blesses you. But if she's the one who's out here just hurting people repeatedly, people that karma has no time limit. It comes back. Trust me. And life has a way of humbling motherfuckers. Uh, and it's, is it sad that I like wish that? Like I wish that life no. knocked harder? Is that fucking, No, it will. I'm not a vindictive, per- no, vindictive no, no. person. And trust me, baby, it will. We all get ours. And she would deny it all. And then I would show her pr- my proof. And then she'd be like, oh, my bad. I'm like, how come it takes me showing you proof for you to say sorry but that's crazy. Anyways, we'll, we'll get back on track. So you and Schmander. <laughs> yeah. I thought you guys were adorable. Thank you. Um, so we call each other Twin Flames because we're, I don't know. So he comes from a small farm town in West Virginia. He joined the army. We have a lot of same story. And then he kind of was broke, no no direction what to do. And then moved to Vegas and started the whole, you know, he was a male stripper, porn, all that yeah. shit. Um, Made something of himself. Yeah. And so, and talking to him, we would like finish each other's sentences and shit. We've been through a lot of shit together. It was good, but uh, drugs tore us apart, man. What'd you guys start doing? So I was in love with cocaine. Mm. God damn it. I I used, every do, time I would get drunk, I would want to yeah. do blow too. I, I, but for the minute I woke up, like I was just like 10 grams a day, honestly. It was so... That, you might be ADHD. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I love the upper and it gave mm. me confidence that I never had before. And mm-hmm. I was like able to do everything without it. I couldn't even do a pile of laundry. but I, So I, it was a year long of me... Fuck, man, it was bad. But then I started taking um, Adderall and Coke. I, I don't know how my heart didn't pop. Like, wow. I was. And then I wanted to come down. I was so high sometimes I would take Xanax to come down. So my heart's like, what do mm. I go up, down, up? Yep. That's what almost I would do too. Overdosed. I was always doing those too. Yeah. Almost overdosed like four different times. Like, legit. My body went into shock, throwing up, pills. I had to take me to the hospital. And I was doing that for him though, too. So yeah. I don't know. To like keep up with the lifestyle. Yeah. I, I don't think, I think he's told this on podcasts himself. But yeah, I, we were helping each other. We were taking each other to the hospital. So we're like, we had each other, you know, like Bonnie and Clyde, ride or die. But after a while, it's like, I need someone to say, no, uh, yeah, it's, I need you to help me. I, and I can't help myself. You can't help yourself. Well, so we're just kind of like in this little, like we're making so much good money that I went from like 15 to 20 K a month to like a hundred to 200,000 doing porn with him. He convinced me to do porn for the first time ever. My fans love that shit. Don't oh, make I that bet. Much now, but yeah, at the height of it, I was making so much money and I was like, fuck yeah. And I'm high on drugs. I have confidence. It was fun while it lasted, but it was a year of that, and I was able to pay off all my immediate family's debt, and then I was like, well, now what? Like, I'm not, I don't want to keep doing this shit. Um, you know, I'll still do sexy little things, but, like, hardcore crazy shit. I was like, this isn't me. This never was me, but um, it was fun yeah. while it lasted, and I didn't always get sober. So. true to who you are. Yeah, and I just stopped all that in August, so... Mm-hmm. And that's when you decided to move to North Carolina. Yep, it just completely South. changed my life, like... 
So how's uh, sobriety going for you? Ah, uh, it's so August, hard. September, October, November, December, January. So you've been sober six months. Yeah, I'm proud of you. It's fucking hard. No, I know, dude. I used to take Xanax and fucking Laura tabs every day, and then Fuck. Jay and I were on the trial by fire tour with Yellow Wolf in 20. 20- 16 or 2017 i can't remember i think it's 2017 and i just looked at him one day and i was like i don't want to be on because jay never you know he's like teach their own my husband's wow. really cool like he's just like whatever you got to do to fucking get through whatever and i was just like i don't want to do these anymore and he's like okay and i never touched them again but it has been sobriety wow. has been the hardest battle of my life yeah. getting to know myself without being stimulated by something and i think after drug use for so long it it your brain's never gonna be the same absolutely so like, how do I, you know what I mean? You're never going to feel it's, that good again. I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it's going to it's gonna heal itself, but it's going to take fucking time, dude. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, you're you're doing the right thing. And they always say, you know, the walking the straight and narrow is the hardest, you know. All roads lead to hell. And yeah. it's like that, that one road that fucking leads <laughs> you to fucking sobriety and redemption is like the thinnest road. But it's, if you can just stay on this path and just keep it going, you're going to figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, it's just hard to. And plus, while I was doing it, it's I was blinded by all the money and the fun with it. And we were, that's why we say we're twin flames because it, but it doesn't mean twin flames are soulmates. They're not supposed to be with their twin flame. Well, twin flames, there's a lot of pain. Yeah. That's what people don't realize. Twin flames think, oh, twin flames is so cute and we're soulmates and we're going to be together. No, twin flames is separation, yeah. hurt, pain, lessons, yeah. mirroring each other. That's what a twin flame is. We literally mirrored each other. We do. And that's why I'm like, I need to be with someone a little bit different than me because I need someone to pull me out of this shit. I need a... But it was so much fun. I was like, I don't even know where I was going with that right now. Yeah. Um, well, you were talking about getting sober. And, yeah. Or, pff, cut that out, please, <laughs> Jason. I said, <laughs> yeah. You were talking about Schmander. And, <laughs> you know, now you're on this road to sobriety and it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's fucking hard. But I, I looked in the mirror and I was like, I look like my mom right now. Because, you know, after I would only sleep once every seven days and I would eat like one bite of an apple once every seven days. Mm-hmm. Like it was bad. And I looked in the mirror. And you know, like sometimes you get paranoid and you start picking your face. So I had like scabs on my face. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, I'm making all this money, but like, who Are the you fuck really am happy? I? And I look, I, I looked in the mirror. And I saw my fucking mom. I was hallucinating probably from being up so long. Mm. I was like, fuck. I never wanted to be a drug addict. I never wanted to, but it just goes with it. Everybody in Vegas, Vegas. is fucking. The yeah. first party I walked up to, I'm not going to say her name, but she's one of the world's famous porn stars, one of the top five. She came up to me and said, put this in your tongue. And I was like, just in shock that it was her. I was like, okay. I let her put it on my tongue and then from there just Nicolette I, Shea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, who is it? I'm, uh, I want to guess who it is. We can, we'll bleep it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's Barbie the has. Girl ever. Yeah. Barbie's done so much stuff with her. But she's yeah, the sweetest. Her. She actually grew up and had to steal food for her family. And like, she only came to the U S because her pimp like married her, said he would give her a good life or like beat her ass. So she saved money in the sock and then enough money to leave him one day and because she got into porn like all the porn you google like mainstream porn she was like drugged up and her pimp would take all the money so eventually mm. she so she's a cool fucking girl but yeah. um yeah drugs are i've done every drug except heroin and meth but yeah fuck man same I was, well i did meth but not heroin wow. yeah I, i'm pretty sure i've had some meth coke before like yeah you can just know when <laughs> you it's just, yellow when like, it's a little methy and you yeah. fucking can't take the edge off for a week you're like yeah i yeah. gotta hold this some fucking meth it's for real yeah like, for sure well yeah. what does this next year what does 2022 look like for combat barbie <laughs> Um, so are you going to do like, yeah, like self healing? Yeah. I need to figure out who I, I need am. to get you with my psychic who just did my reading for the year. Oh my God. She'll make you feel so good. She does my readings every year. I need that. Mm-hmm. I never believed in that shit till like a year ago. And I'm like, how is this so spot on? And I'm like, no, I used to think it was some weird hippie shit, but I'm like, this is legit. Like the truth. Like it's crazy. Yeah. So, but yeah, just, um, trying to be sober. I mean, I still drink alcohol now. So that's the thing. I got sober in August, but fuck, I started drinking like crazy because I, mm. was, I wasn't high. I was like, I need something. I can't be sober in my thoughts. So I moved to North Carolina and man, I was doing like fucking two bottles of tequila a day. Like, I think I was drunk every single day since I've been there, but I'm like, but at least I'm not on drugs. But yeah, well, you're, you're healing and you're yeah. learning how to deal with it. So, you know, yeah. it's what you have to do to survive and get through right now. But as long as you're conscious enough to know, hey, this is not going to work out in the long run. I can't yeah. keep doing this. Oh, no, yeah. I don't, I don't want to have to rely on a substance and I just want to be me again and be sober and be happy. So, um. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure that out. And I've been writing a lot. All I do is write now. I still do fun, sexy stuff on my OnlyFans, but obviously not hardcore shit like I used to with Xander. Right. Um, so I do a little sexy stuff there, you know, um, and I'm just, I write a lot. So I just sit the house right. And then, of course, 
Fort Bragg. I'm single now. So <laughs> what do you, through them fucking soldiers. <laughs> well, so what do you look like? What do you look for in a dude? <laughs> Oh, I just like the typical military douchebag dude. Like <laughs> <laughs> military douchebags, mount up. Yeah, tattoos, muscles, and oh, that uniform. But um, I can't be with Marines because I did seven years with Marines. I fucking cannot. So that's yeah. why Marines come at me. I'm like, sorry, I'm sure you're a good guy, but the way they treat women, I'm like, I can't mm. be with you guys. But soldiers, you know, there's a lot of female females in the fucking army, so they treat their women like nice. Like I ask soldiers, have you ever heard this said to a girl? Have you ever done this? He's like, no, you'll get fired instantly. You'll kicked out. I'm like, good. Aww. He's like, our women like are badasses, and so that's why I like s- army soldiers because uh, they respect women like that. So. And then I tell them I'm marine, and they're like, fuck yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Aww. So well, I'm excited for you for this next year of self healing and getting to know yourself, and I Thank can't you. wait to see. I know that you are you're so <laughs> tenacious. I know that you're gonna fucking have some breakthroughs, and you're gonna just Thank keep you. soaring and doing everything to make your heart happy. Thank you. But I'm still lost. I'm 29 years old and I'm like, I still don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, but girl, I'm going to be 42 in two weeks. <laughs> and I, shut still... the fuck up. I thought you were like 35. Shut <laughs> I up. love you so much. I heard you Thank say you. that you're in your 30s. Yeah. No, Um. I am going to be 42 in two weeks and I still don't know what the fuck I want to do with my life. How do you so... look younger than me? Fuck I, you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm getting a facelift soon. So don't... No, motherfuckers don't play. <laughs> I, I've been announcing it every podcast, so I'm like, when I do it, don't be fucking surprised. Don't but come for me, internet. You don't need it. Your face is tighter than mine. I'm like, oh, stop who's it. your lady? Do you have a Botox? I'm like, yeah, I got. She's great. I need, actually need to go see her. But we're gonna be uh, on the West Coast next week. You're gonna be on the in the West Coast too. I gotta get a car back from somebody. <laughs> I don't know that's gonna go. Up. Uh, well, we're gonna be out there, so you gotta come hang out with us. I would love that. And I want you to come back on the podcast every year and just oh, kind of, you. you know, just be a regular guest because I know everybody on here is going to love you. Thank you. I said some crazy shit today, though. It's the first time the world's hearing about this. I really appreciate it, though. You have such a cool story. You've been through a lot, girl. Like you're you, I don't think you've slowed down enough to process everything you've been through. So that's ADHD. (laughs) Well, that's where the drug use and the drinking comes in because you, you know, we weren't taught how to cope with stuff as kids, you know? So now I think this year is going to be your year that you're going to learn how to cope and navigate through all the trauma that you've been through. Thank you. I hope so. Wow. I don't know, though. It's a big old question mark, but I'm excited. I'm You're hopeful for to. the first time in my life. I'm really hopeful. So hope. It, listen, hope gets motherfuckers through when I'm fucking yeah. depressed and don't want to be here anymore. The only thing that gets me through is hope of not feeling like that anymore so mm-hmm. having hope is number one key of survival and you're gonna do this but i'm really proud of you thank you i'm like why are you depressed though you have a life that i wish i had so i'm like why are you depressed i wish i could fucking tell you <laughs> i'm actually going to doc amen in like uh in february to get a scan of my brain to find out but you know i was in a severely abusive relationship so i do feel like i might have a, tra- a traumatic brain injury from all the damage that he did to me and it's not that i'm depressed with my life it's it's a fe- when you I never understood depression until I felt it. You can't pick and choose like, hey, I don't want to be sad. It just fucking happens. Yeah. And my husband actually battles severe depression, too. We have oh, everything fuck. we could ever fucking want. But money and fame and all that shit that doesn't control uh, chemical imbalances in the brain. Yep. You know, so I'm I'm seeking answers and I have been seeking answers for the past two years. I haven't given up. So Good. vitamin regimens, if you need help with any of that, like I've been through so much shit with vitamins. You know, Mimi and I have, too. And she she's actually microdosing now. Nice uh, she, mushrooms, yeah. Nice. So if we can help you with any of that, we will. We're all about healing and fucking self healing and doing it the holistic way around here. I love that. Yeah. So yeah, no hard drugs. Yeah, no, no hard, hard drugs, drugs, baby. No party. You got to stop the party. And the party's got. It's not a party if it happens every day. That's yeah. what I always say. It's not a party if you fucking die. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks I really appreciate me. you. I'm sorry, I talk over you. I have such so ADHD. No, years, you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and where, what's your socials? Where can everybody find you? The Combat Barbie <laughs> on everything, because fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah, just Google the Combat Barbie, and you guys will find her. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Dumb Blonde. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>